latest edition of PacWest Magazine. I'm Wayne Coito. The PacWest is one of the most diverse conferences in all of the NCAA, stretching over four states and 10 schools with students and coaches from all over the globe. Check out this feature where we get up close and personal with some of the people that make up this great conference. Basketball fans around the Pac West and around the nation have grown accustomed to the thrilling exploits of BYU Hawaii's Jet Chang. The 6'4 guard made national and international headlines a year ago with his amazing 43 point performance. It was a game to remember as Chang went on to be named the most outstanding player in the Elite Eight. The Jet knifes to the hole, lays it in, drawing the foul, and then showing his ring. For Chang, it's Ching. He cans a three and one. BYU Hawaii led 26-19 after the free throw. Chang continued to do it all, taking it right at two defenders and the foul. 26 points for the first half, eight of nine shooting. Two on one break, finished off by Chang. BYU Hawaii advances to their first title game with a 110-101 win. Last year has been, it's been an amazing uh, experience for me and for all my teammates. Because you know we had a uh, great run and we have uh, like very good uh, relationship with each other. No matter as teammates or coach, we very enjoy uh, each other. But the senior season has been one of ups and downs for Chang. He is still the leader in the Pac West scoring race, but his Seasider team got off to a slower start than usual, and then Jet battled injuries and had to miss a couple of games along the way. You know, I think I just hit a floor, so it's okay. I feel, I feel better right now, but, you know. It'll be okay. It's not going to affect your shooting. You're going to keep shooting the ball. Now, you're a very brave person. Tell us what the doctor did to you on the sideline, and we actually caught it on tape. What did he do to you? Just uh, put it back, because, you know, the first half kind of go east, the second half go west, so it's, you know, pretty bad. So, you know, how did that feel? Uh, Things, but it's, it's you know, painful, very painful. So when Jet goes down, who pops up for the Seasiders? One of many shooting stars for BYU Hawaii is guard Junior Ale. A Hawaiian board product out of nearby Haula, who is the state high school player of the year at Kahuku. Junior battled to get playing time when he first came to BYU Hawaii after his LDS mission, but then eventually developed into a fearless long range shooter and became one of the Seasiders' many offensive weapons, averaging over 12 points a game. I think as a team, we, we did really well, we moved the ball really well. Um, we, do, we always do good when we're running. And as long as we get everybody on the break, we should be on fire. And individually, it felt good, the shots felt good, some didn't really fall. But as long as I feel good, hopefully it falls through. And the chemistry between Junior and Jet, talk about that, because that really is impressive when they get it rolling. No, they both are, because their range is so far, they're both so quick. They both can shoot with someone right on them, so when they get hot, they're pretty hard to handle. And yet at the same time, early in the year, you know, we weren't moving the ball and working together, and so it was much more difficult. Both Junior and Jet were on their game when the Seasiders hosted Hawaii Hilo in an early PacWest game in January. Jet was showing off his skills in a big way, hitting for a game-high 29 points as the Seasiders extended a three-point lead at halftime and built it up to as big as 25 in the second half. Number 25,
Meanwhile, Junior chipped in for 14 points as the Seasiders went on to win handily by a final score of 81-63. The Hawaii native was very upbeat after the key conference victory. Man, last year's run was, was amazing. Of course, we missed a lot of guys like Marcus Whitby and Patterson and Gamron. Uh, our goals and our vision this year was just to get back. And I know we can with this team. We kind of struggled in the beginning, you know, with like two and six, I believe. But uh, we're going to get there, and we're starting to look uh, more, ge we're gelling together a lot more. Jen and I, we play for some, some time, you know, we know each other, we know when, when we're doing good, and we just know when to find each other. And Jet, man, if you just get him the ball, especially on the break, we're going to win. We're going to win games. So the Jays have it at BYU Hawaii, Jet Che, along with Junior Ale. And when you throw in another hot shooting guard, Jake Daystrup, it's an offensive firestorm that makes the Seasiders one of the teams to watch this year in the Pac West. The Pac West, from Hawaii and California to Utah and Arizona, it's the most beautiful destination conference in the entire NCAA. 10 outstanding schools, Academy of Art, BYU-Hawaii, Cal Baptist, Chaminade, Dixie State, Dominican, Grand Canyon, Hawaii Pacific, Notre Dame Dana Muir, and the University of Hawaii at Hilo. The home of champions and outstanding student athletes, the Pac West. I chose Division II because athletes graduate at a higher rate. I can stay closer to home and be an important part of the community. I chose Division II because I can double major. And take part in campus activities. I chose Division II because classrooms are smaller. Students have more time with their instructors. And I can compete for a national championship. I chose Division II for all these reasons and more. I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose, I chose Division II. We'll have more Pac West Magazine after this. Imagine. Imagine collaborating with a diverse group of people from different backgrounds who all share common values. A place where giving back to the community is not only encouraged, but expected. Where your professor is not just a teacher, but a mentor. Imagine a place where individual leadership is prized. Imagine Chaminade University. Every year on PacWest Magazine, we spotlight one of our amazing people around the PacWest Conference, and we're doing it again this year. Let's see who the light shines on this week. Nestled between the mountainous cliffs of the Pulley, the shimmering blue Honolulu Harbor, and a few towering skyscrapers, well, by island standards, lies Hawaii Pacific University's campus. Take a stroll down 4th Street Mall, the main artery of the school's headquarters, and you'll find yourself surrounded by the charm of the downtown district. This is a daily walk enjoyed by HBO alumnus and current employee Brent Curry. It is also a commute he would have never known, except for a near tragic accident in Pennsylvania. In Erie, Pennsylvania, and for those of you who know the climate there is very snowy, very cold, I got into a car accident one day. And I was thinking to myself, man, I could have ended my life right now. And I never got to see Hawaii. So the next day, I applied to Hawaii Pacific University to get my master's. I was lucky enough to get a graduate assistantship with Jeff Arata, who was then the Sports Information Director at HBU. He brought me on board and uh, kind of weaseled my way in and still here uh, seven years later. After attaining his master's in communication, Curry made HBU Athletics his life serving as the voice of Sea Warrior Sports. But even that job could only qualify as a part-time gig. So when the SID job opened up at his alma mater, Curry jumped on it. Even if it's not always the most glamorous role in the department. Yeah, what people don't understand is you get to go to the games, but you get to go to all the games, all the time. So not only is it a lot of work in the office with keeping up to date on the website and the stats and all that kind of thing, but it is actually going to the game. That's the fun part for me. 
Um, maybe the part that, that some people don't realize is after the game's over, it's not just pack up your bags and go home. There's a lot of uh, background work and uh, research and stuff that needs to be done after the games uh, to get the correct information out to the media. Fortunately for Curry, his passion for sports makes him the ideal man for the job. In fact, underneath the uniform, he's just a fan, like you and me. Oh, no question about it. No one gets in this business to get rich or for light hours or for anything like that. It, it's definitely, you have to love what you're doing and you have to be really into it, which I certainly am. I've been a sports fan my entire life. I started playing sports as soon as I could start walking and I soon figured out I wasn't very good. So I needed to find a way to stay around the game without actually being a participant. Now in my 30s, obviously I'm not going pro in the NBA or anything like that, so this was a great opportunity for me to be around the team, be around the kids, and really enjoy coming to work every day. Pull Curry away from the games for a while, and you'll find a pure adventure junkie. But even the word adventure might be understating Curry's recent experience, which garnered him some local media attention when he ended up passportless and worse off, penniless, in mainland China. I met some guys on Craigslist. Uh, we decided to sail from Honolulu to Los Angeles. About halfway there, we lost the engine, lost the generator, and the sail snapped. Called an oil tanker to come pick us up. They dropped us off in China and somehow made it back to the U.S. So uh, that, there's your 30-second cliff note version of, of the Brent Curry shipwreck story. And how many days were you so-called lost at sea? Uh, about a month. We were at sea for about a month, and uh, that's a strange experience if you've never been off land for that long. It's, it's quite a, quite a, quite messes with your mind. So I would imagine you're not going to be answering any Craigslist ads to head to the mainland anytime soon. That's just the thing, Bob. I'd do it again if I had the chance. I want to finish the deal this time. Brent Curry of Hawaii Pacific University, one of the shining faces of the Pac West. The Pac West stretches from Hawaii to California to Arizona and Utah. Let's check out highlights now on Pac West Magazine. In a basketball season chock full of exciting games around the Pac West, one of the biggest was played out in early February when Dixie State traveled to the islands to take on BYU Hawaii. It was a matchup of the two teams who have won or shared the conference title the past three years, and who just a season ago battled each other in the NCAA West Regional Championship game. This contest had huge repercussions in a conference title race, but how the teams had gotten there this season was totally different. Dixie State had been playing strongly all season long and had soared into the top five of the West Region rankings. The Red Storm, guided by perennial coach of the year, John Jetkins, have made this year one of their strongest ever in the Pac West. Meanwhile, Ken Wagner's BYU Hawaii Seasiders were coming off last year's amazing run to the national championship game, but had struggled getting out of the blocks this season. They lost several non-conference contests early and didn't have a winning record until January. But on this night in Laie, it was the Seasiders who jumped in front first. Despite an ankle injury suffered early in the contest, All-American candidate Jet Chang would hit for 16 points as BYUH built up a double-digit lead in the first half. The Seasiders were especially hot from the outside, and guard Jake Daystrup had his biggest night of the year, hitting for 22 points as the Seasiders led by as much as 11 early in the second half. But then Dixie started going inside, and that turned the game around. Griffin Jones had a night to remember, hitting eight of nine shots to finish with 16 points as he helped the Red Storm get even. Also having big games inside were Solomon Jensen and Dalton Grosskreutz, who combined for 28 points in the paint as Dixie stormed back to take the lead. 
for much of the second half. It was a seesaw battle with the two teams showing why both have what it takes to be in contention for the PacWest title. It would come down to the wire with BYU Hawaii down by just one point in the final seconds. But they couldn't get the last shot to drop and that gave Dixie State a huge victory on the road by a final score of 70 to 69. I thought, I thought the key, one of the keys of the game was Mo, he was one of these Dr. Marie's. I thought him diving into that ball at half court was huge. The lead tip and get a layup out of it. Um, we, we didn't see good from the foul line in the first half. In the second half, we, we focused when we landed this two, but saw it too huge. We've we got to get Griffin Jones the ball in there. He was, they had a little guy on him and give them a lot of credit. They were fighting hard in there. we got to give them the ball. But tonight was a team that we had some guys come off the bench that really helped us. And Derek Owen didn't play very well. Randy Craig didn't play very well. Guy stepped up and, and uh, played in the new team, so it's a big, big team win. But the Atlantic leg, not one of his better games tonight. Dalton came off the bench and he really sparked us. I thought he, he shot one questionable shot. He was so hyper and he's playing so well. He shot a quick three that I didn't like. But uh, I'll tell you what, their, dad, their kid, 32 Jack Astor, played great. I mean, he had some big time shots. This was a fun game. These guys, both teams were battling it. We knew we were pretty equal to them. We play a lot like them. We run a lot of the same plays. We knew it was going to be a war all the way down, and just thank goodness we came out on top. So a big win for the Dixie State Red Storm, as they not only won on this night in Laie, but also picked up four straight victories in Hawaii. That's the first time they've ever accomplished that feat in the always thrilling PacWest men's basketball title chase. University. Earn your degree on campus, online, or in the evening. You're watching PacWest Magazine here on OC16. In state-of-the-art facilities. I can still come back and see my professors, and they know me face-to-face. -face. It's an amazing relationship that goes from Cal Baptist on to the future. At CBU, campus life is unparalleled, featuring world-class athletics, fantastic food, lasting friendships, and life-changing ministries. CBU is not just an education, it's an experience. Why don't you join us at CBU? Live your purpose.
I'm Jane Texer, Assistant Commissioner for the PacWest Conference. Last season on PacWest Magazine, we introduced you to Jane Texera, the newest addition to the PacWest staff. Well, we're featuring Jane again this season as she answers your questions about all things NCAA. Straight from the conference office in Newport Beach, California. In a new segment we like to call, Hey Jane. Oh, hey, just catching up on my PacWest news in this quarter's edition of the PacWest Magazine. Today's Hey Jane letter comes from Sarah Bowden in San Marino, California. Sarah asks, Hey Jane, are there any community service projects that PacWest is involved in? Thanks, Sarah. That's a great question. As a matter of fact, in 2003, NCA Division II established a national alliance with the Make-A-Wish Foundation, a global charity that grants the wishes of children with life-threatening medical conditions to enrich the human experience with hope, strength, and joy. In the spirit of service, NCA Division II student-athletes, coaches, administrators, parents, fans, Friends and communities across the country are working hard to make a difference in the lives of Make-A-Wish recipients. Over the past seven years, D2 conferences have raised over $1.9 million for the cause. February 18th through the 26th is this year's Week of Wishes, a campaign to help raise funds and awareness for the Make-A-Wish Foundation. All donations received by PacWest School for the campaign will be used to help the NCAA Division II reach its goals of raising $500,000 and granting a wish to every eligible child. Check out your local PacWest School to see what they have scheduled to celebrate this week's of wishes. If you would like to make a direct donation, please visit www.wish.org backslash NCAAD2. That's it for Hey Jane. See you next time. If you would like Jane to answer your question, send her an email at janetexera at thepacwest.com. Stick around for more PacWest Magazine. Over the years, we've had a lot of great features on the PacWest Magazine. Let's go inside the PacWest Magazine vault. For years, the student athletes of Dominican University of California have put their best feet forward on the small and cozy field just a few hundred feet from their main gymnasium. That small and cozy feeling is about to change to wide open spaces. With help from community leaders and key sponsors, Dominican recently began construction of new fields and new courts that will greatly enhance the student athlete experience at their beautiful campus in San Rafael. Once blocked by large eucalyptus trees, the view is now wide open with Mount Tamalpais now smiling down on the campus from a distance. This is what it's all supposed to look like when construction is completed in the next several months. Penguins Athletic Director Terry Toomey has helped oversee this important project at Dominican, and he took us on a little sightseeing tour to explain what is going on with the new building upgrades and what it will all mean for his growing athletic program. We have what was previously known as a field of dreams that we're developing, which is going to be a multi-purpose uh, athletic field and tennis facility uh, to facilitate our athletic endeavors, but also to be a real asset for our community here. 
uh, well, that field of dreams is now a reality. So uh, right now we're in the process of developing uh, our new home for, our, for the Penguins, for our soccer program and our lacrosse program, uh, as well as we're installing six new tennis courts for our tennis facility and hopefully uh, for men's and women's uh, tennis in the future here for Dominican. For the field, this is going to be the Jerry Kennelly Field. And for the athletic facility, it's the John F. Allen Athletic Facility. Our tennis courts are the Antonio Castellucci tennis courts. And it's not, like I said, it's not just an asset for Dominican. Dominican's going to love it and, and reap the benefits of it, but it's really going to be great for our Marin community because we really do see it as a way to reach out to the youth and our and our future future penguins. We feel like that would be a way to get them on campus, so it would be great. And we're really excited about being a, a member of the Pac West. I think the Pac West growth is something that we are uh, benefiting from. We're enjoying it. We're enjoying seeing our new future members of the Pac West. I think the Pac West is going to be something to be reckoned with in the future. So we're really excited about not only our institution, but also our partnerships with other institutions. The new fields and courts at Dominican are another example of the great growth in the conference and another reason why the future is so wide open in the Pac West. Thanks for joining us on PacWest Magazine, a closer look at the people and places of the Pacific West Conference. For the latest PacWest news, join us on the web at thepacwest.com. There you can like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and watch even more PacWest Magazine on our YouTube channel. For Bob Hogue and Malia Smith, I'm Wayne Cueto. See you next time on PacWest Magazine.